Good morning, everyone. Well, good evening, whenever it is uh, when you guys are watching this. But for Marigold and I, it is morning. Um, it is January 9th, and um, it's a beautiful day here. I just got back from my walk a little while ago. I haven't walked on the beach in such a long time, and it felt so nice to be out there. Um, Perfect weather, just needed long sleeves, but not really anything else, and it was just great. But it's probably chilly where some of you guys are. Angela and Rosie, I know it's got to be chilly in Germany today. So we're going to do another winter book. I got this book from the library at a library book sale. Marigold, you're not being helpful. It is called The Snow Tree. Join Little Bear's search for color in a white and wintry world. Marigold, I'm gonna have to put you out if you don't stop. So, this looks like it's gonna be a sweet book about snow. So, let's see what happens to Little Bear. I actually bought this from the library book sale and it was like a quarter. Um, again, it looks like a teacher donated a whole bunch of their books and I went in at the right time and I just grabbed so many books for 25 cents each. I got like a whole bag of them for like $2. So I'll be, I'll be reading some of those to you guys as the weeks go on. All right, here we go. The Snow Tree. The Snow Tree, written by Caroline Repchuk, illustrated by Josephine Martin. The pages are really thick, like, and they're embossed, so you can feel like there's, there's texture, like these snowflakes and the trees are textured. And I see you guys will read it together because I just really love, I love the whole experience of this. It's not only beautiful, but, you know, you can feel it too. Little Bear woke and the world was white. Where have all the colors gone? He cried, for he had never seen such a white and wintry world before. But the wind only answered with silence. Then out of the snow came Lynx. He held orange leaves in his mouth for the snow tree, he explained. So we will remember the warm glow of fall and the burning sunset of an evening sky. Next came Squirrel. She carried scarlet berries and laid them softly at Little Bear's feet. They glistened like drops of blood against the snow. To remind us of flowers and fruits from the forest and fields, she said. Blue Jay flew down with feathers held firmly in his beak. It's all I have to give, he said, but these feathers are as blue as the summer sky and the rolling waters of the river. From deep inside the frozen forest, Mink appeared. Nature's finest, she declared, adding velvet fur to Bear's collection, brown like the rich earth beneath the snow. Little Bear looked up as Raccoon came padding softly through the snow and spread fresh green shoots before him. My offering is to remind us of the green of spring, of new life after the sleep of winter. Look at that beautiful raccoon. Reindeer moved slowly forward through the snow with purple rock piled high upon his back. Here is color that will endure forever, he said, as purple as the mountains and the rolling clouds of thunder. Bunting alighted on a nearby branch, laden down with yellow cones. I carried all I could, she said, so we won't forget the yellow corn that grows all summer long in the fields beyond the forest. 
Arctic fox brought icicles that sparkled silver in the frosty light, like raindrops in the sunlight. It is time to decorate the snow tree, she said, and you, little bear, will guard this tree all winter long. Your black fur will remind us of night's velvet darkness. Last of all came Moose, a bright golden star hung gleaming at his neck. Set this star high upon the tree, he proclaimed. Let its light shine out to all the creatures of the forest, that they may gather to celebrate the glory of nature and the beauty of peace and friendship this Christmas time. Oh, I get it. They're making a Christmas tree. They're decorating a Christmas tree. Oh my goodness. Little Bear smiled as he stood gazing at the glorious tree. The colors were back. This says, Josephine Martin studied scientific illustration at Hornsey College of Art in England. She has illustrated many natural history books for both adults and children. The Snow Tree is her first storybook for children. Her other hobbies include sailing and playing the violin as a member of an orchestra. She lives with her family in Norfolk, England. So that explains why the illustrations are so beautiful because the illustrator actually um, draws for natural history books. So that explains why there's so much detail. I didn't even know this was a Christmas book. So how lovely is that? That's a nice way to end our Christmas season. I hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. It seems to have come on a good day because um, Captain and I have to take our tree down today. <laughs> so it's time, it's time. We've delayed it as long as we can. We have to take down our tree. So I guess this is the official end of our Christmas season here. Um, all the other decorations are taken down. So now just the tree is left. So I really like this book and um, I'm gonna try to find um, more by the same author. But let me, let me know you guys how you feel. Like have your moms tell me if you like or don't like a particular um, story or a particular type of book. Just let me know because um, I want you to enjoy these stories as much as I do. I love you so much. Have a good night. Hope you're tucked in nice and cozy. Good night.